you, you. Speaking of which, you are an extremely, extremely fit and in shape individual. I admire that about you. Well, it's, um, it's funny because I'm always seeking efficiency. So my objective is always to be capable of doing more with less. And then you apply effort upon that foundation. So when I was younger, it was about, you know, work harder, harder, harder. Um, and now it's work smarter, smarter, smarter. And when you say younger, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say I'm younger than you are. Just going Probably. out on a limb I'd a little bit. I'd imagine. I'm 40. I just turned 40 in April. Okay. And um, when you were younger, how young is that? <laughs> if I were well, to guess, what do I get I to think, look forward to is what I'm saying. To, no, I think, I think during my, you know, the high school and college years is when, you know. Harder. Just work. Hard, Power through it. Hard, hard, hard. Yeah. And now I'm 51 and... What I care about is just having the anyhow strength and capacity to do what I want and perhaps what I need mm. and be capable of doing it. So, you know, if I have to carry you up the stairs, okay, Got not, it. not a problem, Yeah. right? If I yeah. need to run over there, okay, not a problem, Yeah. you know? I do. So that's, that's the criteria that I go by now. Capability was really critical for my grandfather. So I was in... Um, you know, boxing, we would slap fight in the yard as a kid and went through Golden Gloves boxing classes. Oh, and did you? I was quite young and oh, wow. my uh, single digit in the teens and then ended up going into the service, uh, was taught to hunt and track and sail and all of these things. So it was a matter of what branch functionally capability army. Okay. Yeah, army infantry, third uh, infantry division out in Georgia. And I can definitely relate to that capability thing right what you look like with your clothes on is icing on the cake if you're fit <laughs> but yeah. not not an indicator of how capable one is for sure yeah i mean i i like being able to just you know i could pick up a 200 pound kettlebell and swing it until my grip fails right you know what i mean right so that's the saying a lot yeah, I mean, it's just okay. Not, not a big deal. <laughs> just, you know. Oh, it's just okay. Let me pick up 200 pounds and throw it around. Yeah. Like a, I mean, like yeah. a, like a 40 pound kettlebell. Yeah. No, I get it. Yeah. That capability component is key. Yeah. And that's where you're at. Yeah. That's I, your headspace. Yeah. I think, well, I'm not going to grace the cover of a magazine with my body. <laughs> yeah. I got you. I got you. So hmm. you do what you can. Yeah. But that um, inspiring others to be that seems to be seems to be something that's core to you as well well i look at it as physical education you have the body the mind and the spirit and the body is the tangible factor whereas the mind can be changed and you can you know lie to yourself lie to others the spirit well that's a domain that you know everybody can have their own interpretation hmm. but the body what it can do is it's very objective measurable yeah and accountable so it's the sort of the departure point for the you know whatever change and um enhancing the mind and the spirit i would say you know to approach it from a healthy standpoint and yeah. a function is really i think um you know the healthiest standpoint more so than aesthetics and aesthetics is I mean, an unhealthy motivation well, in well, some cases. It, yeah, I mean, I think it can get out of balance quickly, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think when I was 13, 14, that's when I started hitting the weights, and there was definitely an aesthetic get big. component to it. Yeah, get bigger. I that's mean, where I, I was. was skinny. Same, so I, 147 you know, pounds, six feet tall. Oh, wow, you were skinny. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Well, I remember, um, you know, just not liking how skinny I was and wanting to get bigger, hitting the weights. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I was 5'11", 185 as a senior in high school. Yeah, that's a big boy. Well, I mean, it, I was strong. That's what I mean. I mean, yeah, that's, that's a good solid 18, 19 year old right there. I was 147 coming out of high school. And then whenever I went into the military, uh, that's where I put the meat on my bones. Okay. Whenever I was overseas, something happened. Well, I think some people just late bloom Matured in that sense too. Later, for right? sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Learned a lot about that uh, period in my life um, about the spirit and the mind and the body. Oh, I'll bet in the service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
what the body can endure mm. at its limits. Um, heat, stress, the heat changes the equation entirely. What kind of heat are you talking? 120 plus. Oh, yeah, that's constant, you know. Wow. And then and then at battle is um, the way that, we, you know, a modern day battle anyway, which is still on foot in market streets with all this gear on and the heat and, you know, and, and body to body. How about, how about the fact that was there boredom too? For those that wanted it, it was available. Okay. But uh, I'm, um, my mind is a bit more active than uh, my peers okay. usually. And uh, my body being active is the uh, algorithm that works to help manage my mind. Okay. The static, if you will, in my mind. Something you may be able to relate to is, and something I actually wanted to chat with you about is that connection between the body and the mind and the spirit, as you had mentioned, um, because I feel like when I was in, let's just use that as an example, whenever I was overseas and in combat, I felt more like a human then than I ever had. It was something um, very core to me, like a dog. Seems like there's an intensity and a presence. Right. So there's not, a, everything else is just getting filtered out. There's not the sort of distractions. It's all, yeah, it's about you or it's, it's about you, your peers and them and how to make it through the day or right. the mission. Right. And when you kind of boil things down to that, this choice of being capable sort of goes away. You have to have be. Have to be. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so that's what I think is so brilliant and impressive about the civilian life and those such as yourself that choose a path of capability when we have everything blasting us in the face that tells us otherwise. McDonald's, uh, eat fast food, eat this, eat that. God knows there's a million, millions of things on the interwebs right now that tell us what we need to do, how we need to work out, what we need to eat. Who knows? Who really knows the real deal, right? And have we been trained on how to untrain our body to go that direction? Like no one says, here's what you should do or here's what you should eat to be a healthy person. And oh, by the way, there's a transition period mm -hmm. that might be painful. And I think that goes through a, a, for a lot of things in life. When you transition from one thing to another, it's gonna be happy, it's gonna be painful. But a lot of times we try something new and we're like, that hurts, yeah, I'm right. done. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like yeah. that hurts. You well, know? I, think, I think change, even positive change is, I mean, it, it's, it's very difficult. Mm. And, you know, I think the gut reaction is you don't wanna change. Right. So you have to, you know, you have to do it enough to get over that hump. Condition. Yeah, yeah. Condition the body and condition the mind. And I don't know which, in what order, you know, that has to, the chicken, the egg. Yeah, sure, sure. Well, I think, you know, the mind has to make up the mind mm. to go, you know, do it when you don't want to, mm -hmm. to pattern it. Yeah. And the mind helps you figure out the strategy on how to get there. Yeah, well, I see what I like to do is I like to tinker. So I'm always exploring my my balance and um, using locomotion and the principles of fight and flight to sort of say, okay, efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. That's, you know, the skeletal, the, using the skeleton mm. as the principal, um, you know, support structure, the architecture. So you get that right so that everything is working together and it's not, it's not seeking to... Um, function at a capacity where a a weaker part is doing more than its fair share that gets you by for a time but you can't build further upon it mm -hmm. and it ultimately will lead to injury so it's about fortifying the you know the the integration of the whole body yeah. so that you have a sustainable practice so that you can continue to grow and continue to grow yeah. and 
uh, Father Time is like the river flowing. And if you don't swim upstream, you just can't take it downstream. So, it, and then, you know, by necessity, I think injury has also played a big role in my life. I, I was, you know, battered in football, all sorts of breaks and operations and such hmm. um, that force you to now work with a problem that you didn't have before. I'm familiar. Yeah, yeah. And that's, um, that, that's, it's a learning process and it's, um, you know, the, the curse can become the blessing mm -hmm. if you, you know, if, if you're perspective, if, if, well, if you, <laughs> yeah, right. If you, if you can overcome if that's it, your mindset, <laughs> if you can overcome it and then, you know, if, if you would have made a right turn, if you made a left turn, I mean, you know, if a woulda, coulda, that's right. Think everything can be different, no doubt, huh? Just, That's the cool part about this gig, actually. Yeah, you you talk about injury, which all parallel to tragedy. Okay, in some capacity, um, can be tragic, you know. Sure. Um, my grandfather used to always say, I say this a lot, so those that are listening and tune into this, go ahead and make fun. But uh, my grandfather used to say, if you don't have tragedy in your life, you're probably not doing anything. And the, the rule there was, is sure, if you're just sitting around not doing anything, you're not going to have tragedies, but life isn't much fun that way and you're not growing much. The first time I heard him say those words was to my grandmother when I came home with a black eye and bloody knuckles. Okay. Which was I had been defending myself at school and his first statement was, it ain't never been safe to be alive, Shirley, my grandmother. <laughs> and the next thing was, was tragedies are going to happen every day if you're getting in the mix every day. And that's what we need to be doing is experiencing life to its fullest, to expand our mind, to understand what the body is capable of doing and not capable of doing. Paddling out in those waves in Oregon, like we said, you know, how will you know until you do it? Mm. Um, we never know the energy of the world or the water or of others until we give it a run. And that's what it sounds like you're doing, tinkering a bit with the body and with all the things in your lab as well. Yeah, I mean, I just, I love the exploration and I love to um, conceive of tools that can be used to bridge a gap. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, the inventive process comes from that exploration. That, that explains it really, really well. You are making tools to help the humans excel in their abilities. And you're doing it in this, this, I mean, I, the the word that comes to mind, I hope isn't an offense, but it's bizarre almost in ways because you're coming up with these super unconven not conventional thought processes and 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 methods that that really take it next level, and that takes um, that inventor uh, that's within us, some of us, very few of us, to your scale and level. Um, intrigues me intensely it's um it's a quality or a, a characteristic if you will that that is unlike the majority yeah and i think it begins with sort of the the questions of like why mm. right and then what if <laughs> and then you know ex experimentation so the hypothesis and then, you know, the, the test it and then you, the adjustment and then, you know, so the aha and um, yeah. And then, and then it's a process to get it out. So, and that's a whole other ball of it's wax. It's a different kind of magic entirely. Yeah. You know, there's that first bit, the hypothesis, the invention, the testing, the, all the testing that comes beyond that clinical I'm sure in some in some capacity it's got to be clinical I've seen some of the videos where you do run tests and speed tests and power tests with athletes that are clearly and as me being an athlete in the very brief moments of going through some examples of that core fist it's clear it's ultra clear Th that's an internal clarity where it, like there's there's two ways to look at it, I think. The one is the objective measurable, like, okay, how fast are you from here to there, right? Because that's sort of the proof in the pudding. And if you if you can make a difference, then that's what's necessary. And if you can't, well, back to the drawing board. So, 
but the uh, core fist is something that I discovered it in May 1st, 2010. And that was Floyd Mayweather fighting Shane Mosley. Mosley hit Mayweather in the second round. I had been doing this winding and whipping based in the Chinese acupuncture meridians for months and months prior to that, wow. seeking locomotive um, speed and efficiency. Hmm. And in the excitement of that moment, when Mayweather got rocked with the Mosley right hand, I jumped up and my hands went to here. And then later that night, they closed down on it and I had been doing this winding and whipping so much that, that it was like... Wow, the you were circuit, wide open, huh? Well, the circuit was connected and I felt it and it was like, oh my gosh. Wow. It's like, and it's always been very high touch to teach it to people. And it's this is the logo here that bridges it and it gives somebody the capacity to ultimately learn it on their own. And it's be, the middle finger, so cool. that last digit of the middle finger, it has to be straight. If you bend it, then you can't create the skeletal straight circuit. Like, straight like straight, that. Straight, not, exactly. Not this crutched. Correct. You can't, have, you can't have the last digit bent. Okay. And then it's a triangulation. The triangle is the strongest geometric shape. And it's these three triangles being enveloped by the thumb and the pinky. And then once you get I remember that, it now. It comes back when you get it, you yeah. know you got it. When you get it, you, you absolutely know you got 100 percent know that you That's got it. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, it I do breath holding and this assists me in my breath holding because there's a structural so. explanation for this. You know, Western anatomy, you can, you know, okay, well, I'm triangulating the bone structure. I'm going through long bone. I haven't kinked the last joint here, mm. which can't transmit the force. So I, okay, wow, I can triangulate and boom, that makes a lot of sense from an anatomical standpoint, but there's also an energetic. So talk to me about that. You said that so, was an internal. Well, the internal is the Western anatomical explanation works in that regard because now I, the skeleton, the architecture of it is integral and it has integrity. So I can put a hundred percent force into it and it frees me up. Because the well, I'll get I'll get real geeky here. Please, <laughs> the the flexor digitorum superficialis. <laughs> <laughs> the the, <one. laughs> the flexor digitorum superficialis. That's pretty good. That's all right, pretty good. all right. Yeah. All right. So anyway, the the muscle that connects to this second joint of the fingers of the middle finger and the others, it bridges past the elbow. And it's the outside superficial muscle. And the, the muscle that connects to the tip of the finger, that last joint, starts on the forearm. Burrow. And it's underneath. Burrow. So when you, when you fold that second and you have the last one straight, you triangulate, and now you are structurally integrated past your elbow all the way to your finger, driving into itself in the palm and now you've taken that flexor strength Bro, you feel it instantly when instantly. you have alignment yes exactly and, and it's alignment where that balances think about where all of your long tendons are in your body the long tendons the tendons are super strong super spring but the long tendons they're all from your elbows out and your knees down that's hmm. where that's where the long tendons are elbows and, out and so, from so, the knees yeah, from, down are where your long ones are, that's which where are not as... You, that, you don't have a lot of... It's not meaty. Flex. It's Got not it. meaty, okay. right? It's mostly tendon. I see your point. And the long tendon is, is, is something that now on both sides in this three-dimensional spiral dynamic is now integrated so that the flexor strength that is more rooted in fear and fright the flex the your your natural reaction extension is fight right flexion is uh oh you know grab onto mommy kind of thing right and you can take that and then that fortifies the extensors whereas if i just do what comes naturally to me here and i squeeze that that binds me up so if I'm here and I'm grabbing as tight as I can, I, I start to freeze. My shoulder doesn't move fluidly. This, you know, and every running coach ever, you know, don't squeeze a fist. Fight coaches only at impact, right? But what it is is that you have the, 
you have the fight and the flight. Those are sort of the, the basics and everything is built upon them. Mm. So if you're startled, the very first thing you do is you face the force and you extend, mm. right? You, you try to you know, get the bony structure out in front of your vitals and that's pa, right? Yep. And that's reflex. Tony Blauer talks about it with his spear system hmm. where he based it as a self-defense system on harnessing that startle reflex that is what you're going to do. You're not going to wax on, wax off. You're going to actually do that, so you might as well harness Embrace that. It. Well, ride it, and that's your bridge to your next, next move. Next step. Yep. Yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Totally agree. And it's, you know, reflexes. Hmm. And then flight is just... Um, you know, it's a game of efficiency ultimately. How do you get there and bring your family with you fastest and away yeah, from well, the threat? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's it really does boil down to an efficiency game. Yeah, and the balance is the key to efficiency. Mm. So I, I like to say that power equals strength divided by balance, or strength over balance. So if you had a simple equation of power, strength, and balance, it's the power equals the strength divided by the balance. And that means that more strength is good because mm -hmm. that's in the numerator of the equation mm -hmm. and balance honed to a smaller degree. There's less inefficiency though. So the smaller the balance coefficient, mm -hmm. the less inefficiency, now you can get exponential growth for growth sure. For in for, the power. For sure, for sure. Whereas, whereas strength without balance becomes useless and becomes you, counterproductive. You learn this in conditioning. Well, yeah, I mean, if you look at the person who's hiking up the mountain and they're exhausted, right? Anyone, even a novice, what they'll do is they'll sort of put their foot up on the next step. They'll put both hands on the knees. They'll put the head right aligned over that foot and then everything into that one elevation. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you do the next one. Whereas if they're not tired, they're gonna get away with the inefficiency yeah. and they don't even know that it's inefficient. Gotta work smarter right? so you don't so die. So sometimes exhaustion can be sort of a catalyst for finding some form of efficiency. No doubt. That's where I find it in surf as well. Okay. And in fighting, particularly when you're rolling, the exhaustion and that core strength yes. is depleted well, you so find, quickly. You find out very quickly yep. in doing that combative Technique that, is key. Yeah, because otherwise you just run out of gas. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you get these 50 year old guys that have been training to roll and fight for God knows how long, get in the ring with a guy who's, you know, in his 30s and fit as a fiddle and strong and big and outweighs. And these guys in a training session, you know, close yeah. the deal in a school, few minutes. School them. Yeah. Oh, all day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's beautiful to watch. Yes. Something you were mentioning earlier about the spirit. Mm. and the mind. Mm -hmm. We're talking a lot about mechanical, the science behind the mm, the art of this gig, let's say, because the spiritual is kind of the piece that we're left to make up for ourselves or wonder about, you know, with our mind. But what's next? Where did we come from? That That, why are we here doing what we're doing? What's the reason and purpose for all this thing? This uh, physical piece, we were talking about the chicken or the egg, which comes first to support the other. For me, when I'm, my head's twisted, let's say, going through an episode of old stuff with PTSD or, um, you know, I'm angry. I'm caught up in the mix of the day and all of the variables and I can't just seem to do anything right. And, you know, I'm stirred up for the day. The best thing I can do is go for a surf and exhaust myself or go for a run. Even if I'm running at like 0.2 miles per hour, you know what I'm saying? Yep. And I'm on my toes right. and I'm focused on balance. I'm focused on getting there. And that's all I gotta do is efficiency of motion and getting there. That process centers my mind and my spirit in some capacity that I cannot explain. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. What is it? Well, I think, you know, deep ancestral roots, perhaps, because that was, you know, the, the human animal is the greatest endurance animal, right? So if you're going on the hunt, you, you have to run them down. You, you can't win with your might um, or your prowess, 
It's, you know, tool use and then endurance. So we come from that. Um, I think, I mean, it's, I, I know exactly what you're speaking of mm. because, you know, say- To complicate, look, you're not going to have the answer. <laughs> I well, don't expect you to no, have but, the but, answer. But, no, but, but I, I, uh, can, I can definitely- You can relate. relate. I can relate to, you know, the, the run making you feel better. Yeah. Yeah. At a fundamental level. And I wonder it, when I lose that, I lose myself. I can say that with confidence. When I lose the physicality or the physical steps and that rigor in my day or my weeks, whether it be I'm um, working through an injury, mm. you know. Yeah, right. And that's tough. Uh, that's tough. You're you're um, not the capable person that you were. Yeah, right. Maybe that in itself brings on the head game of the mind play that gets your spirit down sometimes. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that maybe the lack of being capable or maybe not being able to invest in your, uh, let's say growth, physical growth or your capability that in itself gets me down much less, um, just choosing not to be physical. You know, maybe I'm taking a week off or something like that. I come up with something as we sometimes do. I feel down on myself, but I think that's just in principle of rigor. I can't tie that feeling back to how I feel when I actually do it and when I get through it, right? There's something magical that happens. It's a release of endorphin, a re yeah, release yeah. of adrenaline. There's a release of all these chemicals in your body that take you next level instinctually. Yep. The, the, the homo sapien sapien. So I think really what we have is we have the capacity to consciously alter our own evolution with tool use and technology. And choice. And yeah, yeah, I suppose. I mean, and you know, awareness. That's what I mean. The aware um, the choice of and I think to um, be aware of what you choose and the outcome and consequence of that. Well, I mean, where we're headed now is the, the curve gets asymptotic. That means, you know, the, the, the curve starts to go vertical. And there's very smart people out there who already say that odds are we are avatars, you know, in some simulation. Like it's already happened. Sure. Right? The The artificial intelligence like what happens when the machine gets so much smarter mm. oh it's happening it happening right now so sure. i mean we live in a time that is you know that the change is just dramatic and you know who knows where it's going to go yeah it's crazy um to think about that who knows for sure it's it's a black box it's a black box to me anyway. I'm not those folks. No, well, I mean, it's a black box to them too, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Man, and in a, a state of the environment, if you will, as such, what does one do? Stay focused? I think so. You play with the ball in your court and you do your best you can. Um, mm. You know, the serenity prayer, right? If, if you can't do anything about it, God grant me the wisdom to, you know, know the difference between that which I can control, that which I cannot control. Mm -hmm. And if you simply cannot control it, worrying about not being able to control it becomes so not the best strategy. It's nonsensical. Yeah, it doesn't. Well, it, it, it's from just, a, from it, a strategy perspective, you you right. Won't. Yeah. Yeah. Time is of the essence and you know, so no you're doubt. sort of wasting the time. Yeah. No doubt. In this body. Yeah. Right. In this version. <laughs> well, that, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a daunting thought, mm -hmm. you know, the sort of, you know, is it, is it just a cycle? <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. A cycle or I like to think of it. Cycle sounds so systematic mm -hmm. and um, staged. <laughs> okay. I like to think about it as um, a gig. A gig. You know, okay. you mm -hmm. kind of, uh, that's the way it kind of feels to me. It's very, this is very going in a very Alan Watts kind of direction. Oh, is it? Yeah, no, I mean, it? it's, it's we, we're talking about the existential big, big things yeah. here. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, 
It, oh, I, I think about it a lot, actually. I think about it constantly. Okay. I can tell you, and, you know, the one thing that I've become more and more confident in feeling, which is a weird thing to think about and say out loud is expressing my feelings, right? Because you had to be tough growing up as a kid in Texas where I grew up, you know. If you expressed your feelings, it was more of an opinion that you needed to articulate intellectually and be able to support that with facts, right? Not your feelings, because feelings oftentimes would drive your strategy into a direction that may not have the most efficient and effective outcome. But when we're designing that, like, that, like, thinking about and thinking through the strategy, there's so many things that I thought I was feeling that I couldn't explain. And now that I'm becoming older and looking into these things and thinking about them constantly, there's one thing that I can say that I'm confident in my feeling, right? Is that I feel like I've done this before. Mm. Not exactly this. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, not exactly. So I have, um, I don't want to degrade the the explanation here by saying by using bud wor buzzwords like like deja vu right. or anything like that but let me ask you if you've ever had a feeling that i wouldn't call it deja vu or anything of that nature but like maybe as a child before you felt conditioned do you remember memories from pretty far back i do from when i was very young um i i remember a traumatic um experience where i almost drowned so I have a visceral recollection of that. And that's probably my, goes back most the furthest. Profound. Well, it just probably goes back, you know, to that I can actually remember events. How old were you? I was three. Okay. So I think pre three, I, I don't have any conscious memories. After three, you're still experiencing things for the first time. Mm -hmm. like nature in a way that you haven't experienced it before, the way dirt feels, the way a tree feels, the way the wind feels across your face, yep. your body for the first time, the way the ocean and the water feel for the first time. Yeah, you become cognizant. Yeah, do you ever, have you ever felt that and in, in, in remember feeling, gosh, I remember this? No. Or this feels, this feels- You're talking like- Like I've felt this before. Almost like reincarnate. I mean, before. I don't know about, as in you've experienced that before. Now I can't say reincarnation. I'm not going to slap that on it. Okay. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. I'm no, not I'm, there I'm just, yet. I'm just trying to contextualize it without, I feel without the buzzwords. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. I feel what you're saying. And, and I, I'm not there yet. I'm not right. suggesting that I believe in that necessarily, but right. I do know what I've experienced and that what I feel <laughs> and it's kind of weird for me to talk about this now because feeling, talking about how you feel is not something I'm naturally good at. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's, it sounds kooky. It sounds crazy. And, and I'm sure it does. But that's something that I felt more confident about lately than I have anything else. And um, I find myself feeling that more and more often now that I'm open to to it mm -hmm. and it could be my mind playing tricks on me don't get me wrong we like to spiritually define what we believe and what feels good and natural and feels safe to us um so i could have made all this shit up for all i know but it's definitely helped me answer a ton of outstanding questions for myself like where did i come from mm -hmm. doesn't matter mm -hmm. am i gonna die yep you bet when doesn't matter because I know that I'm here, right? And I know that what I feel in this confidence that, ah, you know what? If this isn't the last version, it's all good. Even if it is the last version, I come back as dirt, I'm still here. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's sort of getting very uh, Taoist almost, you know, that, that the way yeah. and um i think it's i think it's a very um it's a it's a very interesting awareness yeah. that that you have it's it's perplexed me for some time now in that whenever i take what's very important to me which is the physical right so we're talking about the essence of being 
but then you have the body, which is the vessel that we get to go through this gig with. Yep. So coming back to the gig, the way I see it as a gig is like, we're here, we're doing it this run at it. Is there another run? Fuck, I don't know, man. Right. There could be another run at this. If anyone can tell me that there's not, I'm open to it. Well, there's so much mystery. <laughs> there's so much mystery. And that's what's, I mean, even now today, right? I mean, take the subject of UFOs, for example. Oh, totally. Right? All of the sudden, it's not taboo to say, you know, UFOs exist. And look, there's videos, there's testimony to it. There's, you know, and God only knows or who only knows what it actually is. And then I saw a special on this young boy who, when he was a boy, he basically had these recollections of, you know, dying in an airplane crash. And, you know, he, he, he had specific recollection. And then they found some World War II pilot who they they think that he was some reincarnation of this pilot because of specific things that he would recall as a five-year-old. So he read the article. No, and this I'm is just kidding. Yeah, no, right, right. But I'm saying like just. <laughs> but that's weird, what I think, right? No, but like just initially. Weird, no, but just every a, a, a logical, a logical, sound, reasonable person thinks that. Yeah, somebody but, told him the story. But there's so much mystery. Yeah. And I think basically what I think, here's what I think. I think that it boils down to consciousness can and is whatever consciousness can truly believe it to be. We create it ourselves. That's, well, or we are created by a conscious that, that, that this is what we know. This is the code. This is the math. Because... And that's where the super computation of this artificial intelligence becomes very, very intriguing. And the idea that, you know, if Elon Musk talks about, if you assume any rate of improvement whatsoever, it doesn't matter how slow, but any rate in the technological advancement so that you are making progress in terms of going to an artificial intelligence, there's enough time on the clock to get there. Yeah, for sure. Right? <laughs> yeah, there is. And if there is enough time to get there, then has it, it been It will there? happen or well, has, has already been, happened. Yeah, exactly. Or is underway. It, who, for sure. Who it is. knows? But mm -hmm. I think we, you know, we, we're the construct. I mean, we are speaking a language that we learned by osmosis. We didn't study English. We just absorbed it through mirror neurons. And just seeing it and hearing it and putting two to do two and two together, right? So there was no conscious awareness of learning this, but it's a framework, and we think in terms of the language, right? So in the Bible, right, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Ooh, the logos. So this idea of um, you know the manner in which we communicate through the vibration, this manipulation of the wind, of the air, right? That we, you know, oh, what a tangled web we weave when at first we deceive. So, I mean, it's, um, there's so much mystery. And so, and I just, I just say, okay, I don't know the answers, but I'm open-minded that it could literally be anything as illogical as it may appear. I don't know, right? So I, because for me to anchor myself to some form of certainty, that would be a false hope or a position where I would feel more vulnerable if I insisted that, oh no, history is a certain way and I know it is. I feel like, you know, that sneaker wave could just come at any moment. And crush and just, yeah, we'll just say, you know, well, guess what? It wasn't that way. You know what I think is great about being self-aware as we are, that it's okay to hang on to a belief for a period of time and know that that adds value to your life and helps you yes. cope, let's say, and get through certain things it's like um stages in conditioning the gig. stages in the exactly gig, yeah. a phase of the gig for sure that helps you get through that and then to the next it's uh it's a cool gig we got here for sure the connection to what we're talking about this essence of being consciousness awareness whatever 
and what you're working on from the physical, how are those connected, do you think? Because that's what I, I keep coming back to it kind of, but it's, there's something there, right? Is it, is it just improving and growing um, that, that pushes us naturally into a positive direction? And if we're investing time and effort and conditioning our body, the automatic result is a more positive thing well, I think for, for, well, I, I don't know. For me personally, um, I've struggled with mental health. So I have a pretty severe bipolar and I've lost touch with this reality a number of times. And um, so, and there's a certain compulsion that I have for the exploration and the tinkering. So I, I ultimately, and now that I'm 51 years old, I now all I'm seeking is sort of the the uh, sustainable stability and losing the sort of being being more of uh, seeking to bring things together to bridge not to destroy um, to not let anger and rage and fury sort of you know dominate mm. so um, and it's easy for us to go that direction well it's it's yeah I mean, uh, particularly it, it, with anger the things a, that are going on yeah well it, especially in this context my gosh and, and the anger can be a fuel but unless you can like I, I like the analogy of of channeling that and sort of directing it to the direction of love so that you can take the coal and compress it into mm. diamonds and don't deny the rage, don't deny the anger, but funnel it and channel it into something that is a sustainable, mm. like, okay, I can go all the way. Mm. I can handle all the pressure and emerge with like that, ah, that release yeah. where you're not gripped by it anymore. Thank you for sharing that, by the way. I was unaware. Um, and I know that it's a challenge. It's a bit, yeah, it's a monumental challenge. Yeah. It's, and, and, and some, I mean, I think there's a certain creative element that, that can, comes with it. Yeah. That's just spawned from it. So, I mean, you know, the blessing and the curse kind of idea, the two, the two sides of the sword. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think it really is balance for me is the, the, the act of physical balance, um, I almost had to go mentally way out of balance to arrive at sort of strategies for physical balance that now can help me get back to mental balance, if that makes sense. I would go out into these weird realms and sort of experience things and um, like almost different, different, um, different frequencies almost and have experiences that I'm not saying that it happened so I'm not claiming that it happened, but I know my perception and my experience of things happening were sort of reaching out into other dimensions and the timeless time and, you know, light objects and just, you know, this ideas of reference where, you know, everything is sort of, you know, coming together and there's nowhere to hide and these overwhelming, exhilarating experiences that ultimately end in terror and then blackout. Um, I, you know, the, the, the saving grace, I guess, is that there was some knowledge gleaned from that experience that now I can take with me and move forward and not go back to those places, not in, in this time. Yeah. So I've, um, wow. A friend of mine shared, uh, his experiences in this way and said, I don't know what's happening. It's just happening and it's bizarre, but I don't want it to continue to happen. But what I've, the value I've taken from that experience is exponential and I wouldn't take it back. Yeah. I mean, that's it's and, tough. Well, you can't take it back. No, you can't. So yeah. you have to reconcile somehow, right? My hat's off to you for working through it, my dude. My hat you. is off well, thank to you. you, really. Thanks for sharing. So what are you working on in the lab these days, man? Oh, well, I've got another uh, invention that we are hoping to get out September, October. 
Are these the steps or the? No, it's it's a it's a new rope. Oh, it's a it's a it's a. You know, according to patent searches and according to what I've ever seen, no one's ever done this version. And yeah, well, don't share it here. No, well, yeah, I, I, I mean, I can, I can just say that it has a reactivity that is new and distinct and mm -hmm. very exciting. So that's what I'm currently working on. And then um, the soul steps are, we've just launched those and those are doing very well. Good. You know, great response to them. Yeah. I need to get a pair of soul steps. They're, they're very, uh, they're very unique. You, they just put you on a pitch where your where your skeleton suddenly aligns. You feel a relief in the back. If you go back to origin and you just sort of speculate, our feet really are designed similar to the hand for sort of grasping and manipulating the, the trunk and the branch of trees. Mm. You know, and you look at the primate cousins and, you know, the facility they have with their feet, a chimpanzee will think with its toes, sort of almost like doing this with its feet. Mm -hmm. um, as I'm doing here as we Yeah, do, right, as we with speak. your fingers. So we, we've really differentiated and said, okay, we're going to use the feet to support and transport us, <laughs> and the hands will do everything else, Yeah, right? So if you think about sort of the, you know, the origin of where we may have come from and that design, it's like, oh, okay, so I'm sort of wedging to the center. And as a result, our, the bone structure that we have in our feet, the outside toes, the fourth and fifth toes, yeah. connect directly to your heel bone. Hmm. And the outside of that skeletal structure is what I'll call more integrity and strong in, in direct connection with the ground. And the big toe, second toe, and third toe, they connect to a bone that rests on top of the heel bone. So they are the longer bones and yep. they're susceptible to collapse, that sort of that, that sure. inward pronation collapse. Yeah. So I say, I say that the outside is the strong side and the inside is the long side. Yeah. And what the soul steps do is they have this complex angle that puts you on a pitch that allows you to put almost equal weight into the outside ball of the foot and the inside ball of the foot oh, wow. and to sort of t be capable of just micro millimeter adjustments to take the weight out of your heel bone. Basically what you're doing is you're harnessing the long and the strong aspects, the inside and outside balls of the feet that you're cocking the spring to the inside long so it's not collapsing, but you get support through it. And the weight is shifting to the outside ball of the foot and the heel bone, if your heel is resting on the ground, there's no give, there's no, there's no ability to, to modulate the imbalances in your structure. So by allowing you to pitch your weight slightly forward with that full support where you don't have to use any toe tension, you get this skeletal support that it, it, it translates into your body, your nervous system suddenly understands better how to use your bone structure mm -hmm. as the support mechanism and you give relief to, to the all muscle. the other yes, stuff exactly, that's to the overcompensating yes, for it's a, it, not having good posture or let's say well, not foundation. In, 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 yes, foundation, right. integrity through the skeleton. Got it. And so, and again, core fist, it's all about the skeletal Damn. alignment, mm. right? And so the feet, all the bones of the feet, more than 50% of the bones in your body are your hands and your feet. What? I mean, it's, it's more than 50% of the bones in your body are your hands, wrists, feet, and ankles. Dang. And they're very complex that and very nuanced. Speaks speaks worlds to how important it is to, yeah. to figure out and understand the science in there. Well, and to learn by feel and experience huh. because the verbal cue of like, okay, stand up straight or, you know, balance this way or that, hmm. like, uh, you know, who knows how that's being interpreted hmm. and translated. Hmm. And so, okay, well, it might work for someone, but it's not gonna work for a lot. Hmm. So this is a, a learn by experience so that you can feel a differential hmm. And the nervous system suddenly understands, oh, wow. <laughs> and if it likes it, now there's a sort of a, a muscle memory effect 
that when you stand on these things, now it's sort of in your in your forward locomotion, you understand how to now sequence the loading and the transfer of weight. Wow. Because your nervous system felt what it was like to be pitched up in this suspensional situation. Through that, that foundation condition. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like it it it's pitching you forward and 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 shifting the weight to the outside ball of the foot but suspending the inside ball of the foot so it can't collapse interesting so you yeah. get to put pressure in both the inside and the outside at the same time wow and it's i mean i mean, rather than talk about it you just stand on it right yeah it's I'll like get one yeah i mean it's I need to get it's one. it's really a, it's fascinating wow and we get a great response do you have to have a, a special shoes or anything and you just get on it barefooted no, I mean the the Chuck Taylor or the Vans. I mean, is They'll very work. it's very neutral. I should get so. one for in here so people can try it. Do oh, you have yeah. to use it like all the time to to feel the, um, the feel more, it work? I, well, I would say no. You be, most people get an immediate like. We should whoa. get one in here yeah. and let people try it out. Yeah, yeah. Our, our guests and stuff come in. Yeah, I'd love that'd to be do great. that. That'd I'll be hook great. up with you on that. Yeah, yeah cool. and and it's something where um, what I would say is the more time you spend on it, the better. The better. I mean, I use it for sort of a stand-up desk. I use it actually when I'm seated. It feels good on my feet when I'm seated. It's just, it pitches your feet on this thing that just goes right up the stream and you get that skeletal support and everything feels better. It's very impressive, man. The way that you're working through these solutions. <laughs> well, and this, this one it's was- discovery. A, a, well, arriving at this one was, I mean, it's sort of reminiscent in a way to a very specific spot on the dome of the BOSU ball that I invented. So if you position your feet in one specific location, it sort of creates a similar structure. So I think that's what clued me into it. But the manner in which I created these was like the weird gobbledygook, you know, woo-woo. I mean, it was it was sort of okay, you know, the fifth degree of the the fifth division of a circle combined with the fourth division of a circle gives me two angles that I'm going to combine and rotate. That and then we did it, and it was just like, oh my gosh, this is special. So and you know, it's it's you know the mathematics of movement, and that's that science uh, piece. Well, it's it's piecing together uh, from, I guess, using. Science, geometry, anatomy, mm. energetics from the Eastern philosophy. You know, it's a, it's this synthesis of a lot of things that sort of comes together. So it's um, it's it's difficult to it's difficult to explain in a manner that one can comprehend. It's and so uh, I mean, the, the, it's <laughs> it, the simplest thing is just experience of yourself. See if it see if it works for you, right? Beautiful. That's the simplest thing to do. Yeah, it's just see if it works for you. It's just so impressive to me how you've engineered these things, bro. Well, I mean, it's it's. Uh, you have a team you work. Yes, with. Yes, I have a team that I work with at the at the lab. At the lab. At the yeah. lab, mm -hmm. and you guys, this is your research and development facility and training facility as well. Yes. Uh, yeah. R and D is really what what it's, what it's all about down in San Diego. Yeah, down in San Diego. Cool. Yeah. Is it open to for people to come by and take a look, or yeah, you guys, I mean, it's, it's a private facility that you well, guys don't train folks in, or it's not a conventional gym. Okay, but um, I can tell that have, by the videos. Yeah, bro. we do you have guys people, crawl on the walls and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> we do have people come in for training, and then we host live trainings. Um, when you know we're we're about to start that up again, fortunately, um, but it's more sort of a what I'll say is the lab is, you know, research development where we're working with certain individuals and, you know, it's uh, testing out things, producing the videos and content to, you know, share with people how to use the devices and those things. So it's not a conventional gym where people just come in and train. Yeah. What are these open sessions you're referring to? Um, well, I mean, it's, it's something, you know, we just make arrangements. You know, someone wants to come in, okay, you know, we'll schedule someone coming in to train um, or we'll have a professional education. You know, we do sort of the seminars. People fly in from all over. So Beautiful. Yeah. I mean, and we're able to get back into that now. I imagine that as a relief in some capacity. Oh, is this gosh. something you enjoy? Is this an end of yeah, the well, business that you... I I mean, this this has been just a, you know, such a enduring challenging time 
mm-hmm. mean, we're not wearing masks. And like, I, you know, the fact that I have to put on a mask to go into a store is like, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm about done. Yeah. You know? I get it. Like, I'm about done. I got it. And, <laughs> Trust me. I, other states, I got it. Bro. Other states are done. Yeah, yeah. I got like, it. Like, it's time. Yeah, yeah. It's totally time. I'm with you 100% on oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm with you on it, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, in my building, they insist on it, right? It's a big yeah, apartment I building. It. I recall. And, um, you know, I, I have my mask in my hand, you know, and so and when someone gets on the elevator, I look at them, I say, if you don't mind, I don't mind, right. you know? And so if they insist, well, I'll just, you know, I don't even put it around my ears anymore. I just hold it here like that. Here in Oceanside, I'd say half of the businesses you could walk into without a mask. Yeah, and that's that's really wonderful. And I love it here. Yeah. Uh, we're a little bubble, and I haven't had a bunch of cases come out of here, even in the historical last you know, 15, 16 months even, which has been great. Yeah. But uh, definitely uh, trying times on running an operation that includes other humans. Oh, I know. Other than this new rope project that you're working on in R&D, what's going on? I you know, enjoy my time with my kids. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah i mean it's basically work and family that's that's all i care about good i mean it's those are the two principal factors in my life and you know when i was a younger guy i you know i'd like to go out and do things and now i'm just a sort of more of a homebody like i I, i've done all that yeah you know sort of lived a decade in manhattan in my 20s i get that man are you reading when you read, is it mostly, uh, are you picking up something that supports your scientific ventures or your your body and mind and spirit studies? Or what are you reading? Well, I have, in terms of sort of my profession and stuff, I've read so much that now I'm much more interested in more of the, the you know, the, the mind stuff, spirit stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I... I've, I used to, my, one of my favorite things to do used to be to go to these used bookstores and just, you know, for hours, just peruse through books. And I bought, you know, hundreds and hundreds of books. And, um, my favorite one was a place in Hillcrest that no longer exists even, Mm -hmm. but it was the best used bookstore. And I would find these treasures (laughs) <laughs> you know. What's a treasure in your mind? Well, What's a book treasure? I'll give you an example. One of the treasures was the very first English translation of the very first French translation of the Chinese acupuncture system. So the, fr- the, French, the French were the first people to learn acupuncture from the Chinese. Mm-hmm. And I found a, a book that was literally the first French, French translation, French translation of the Chinese, and wow. it was written in English. So it was the wow. translation from the first to the first. And that is so, a real treasure, bro. Yeah, I mean, just you know that that type of thing to, to come across that book. Yeah, and I mean, it you know I'm talking it was old, and you know, and it, it's a treasure. You can't. I mean, that's a book that <laughs> if you type it in on the internet, it doesn't even come up. Yeah. You know, you can't go to Amazon and buy that book. That's beautiful. Yeah, like those type of, you know. That's cool. Like, wow. And no bookstores are letting you mingle around these days with no mask on in California anyway. So what are you doing yeah. to fill that void? Um, Ordering on Amazon like everybody else, I guess. Well, I mean, they don't have the used bookstores that they used to have. No, they don't. So, I mean, you, you know, that, that kind of treasure hunting has sort of come and gone. Yeah unfortunately and you're listening then i guess more now than reading um i actually have been listening to books it's a little bit easier um i find myself um sort of speeding up the you know on, i do know on audible you can you know sort of you normalize a faster rate of speed to and get then through it normalize another fact because you can read faster than you can talk so you know process also faster than you can yeah, Talk. so I like to I like to you know get the speed up, mm-hmm. you know still have comprehension, but um, it's a fun game to play. Yeah, it is. It is. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it, it dep- and it depends on you know it, how much you're concentrating. And sometimes if I'm listening to a book, I'll fall asleep, mm-hmm. and then you know you end up a couple chapters. You have to go <laughs> chapters back and pick <laughs> yeah. back up where you pick, left pick off. Pick back where no you doubt. left off. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's no kind of funny. What I've been listening to a lot, I'm, uh, 
it's challenging for me to read. I'm, I'm dyslexic, so I don't read well, but I do listen to a lot. Um, okay. And with podcasts out now, there's yeah. a lot of great content out there and I can have Siri read a book for me or a page or a screen or a website. You just ask her to read what's on your screen and she'll just start reading to oh, you. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, if you have an iPhone, you just swipe down with two fingers and it starts reading. You gotta be dangerous if you don't want somebody to hear what your oh, text okay. messages say, but right, right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Gotcha. But um, I've been listening to uh, some more recent studies on sleep okay. and breath. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine turned me on to who's a physical fitness trainer and teacher for kids too. But uh, the importance of sleep mm. has been top of mind in a book that I've been, um, or a podcast and some books that I've been listening to, conversations which you say just data dump into my brain about what you need from a sleep perspective because I'm very on. Mm -hmm. More on the manic, let's say, side. Uh, you know, I get a few hours of sleep a night because I'm thinking constantly excuse me um but i've run my buddy's running through a test right now because he can have healthy sleep i don't know why i can't but he's running through this test of getting exactly and following the rules and the direction of like what it's like to get good sleep and it says that there's a breakdown of the the toxins in the brain that happens naturally through this process of sleep and if you don't fully detoxify you know, you're carrying around these toxins in the brain. It seems quite simple. It's a very interesting uh, thought, but the science is there apparently. And he's done a test over the last few weeks where he's actually rigorously going to bed at the same time and waking up at exactly the same time. He said he's never gained more value out of every moment of his awakeness. Wow, that's really interesting. It's powerful stuff. Yeah. I'll send you uh, the link to what were, what, one of the conversations on sleep yeah, health please do. was yeah, it might please do. Uh, it might be valuable to you. Um, so always exploring at least on my end how I can try to uh, gain the most value of my awakeness. Mm -hmm. um, coming back to that kind of capability point that you were making in the beginning, um, being capable, you have to be sharp and aware. The idea that we're ready for kind of what's to come if you've got to, I've got to carry you up the stairs or you know fireman care pick pick a pick your body off of the gr up off of the ground yeah yeah that's a tough one if a you limp, don't a limp body no, uh, no. the fireman's carry is a tough one if you don't know how and don't have the core right right uh it's a science and an art <laughs> for sure if it's someone that outweighs you as well but um that capability component also to be capable of fully enjoying and loving the experience of this gig, right? And when I watch your videos, when I hear you talk, this has been a very enlightening conversation, I just want to say. Um, when I hear you talk about what, it, what you're doing and the way that you are approaching it and thinking through this and the passion you have for the, what it is that you're doing, this capability thing. For me, it's extremely powerful because when I feel capable, it's a, it's a fucking game changer. The game has changed entirely. Ego, confidence, the capabilities component of being able to, knowing or highly probable that you can achieve the outcome that you're expecting to achieve solely, right? With your body or your mind. Super critical, man, on my happiness. Yeah, yeah. I can relate. It's, it's core. It's core. And um, you're an inspiration, my dude. Well, thank you so much. You are an absolute inspiration. And the tools this tooling, this, this invention, the inventions that you're, you're building. I've never thought about it quite like the way you explained it here today is that you are absolutely right. The human body as it is, is what it is, but it's very vulnerable in it's, it's raw state. But with tools, we are extremely capable. The, what, what's possible is exponentially more. Yeah. Yeah. Tools are fundamental. And I don't think, I, I don't think that I, 
I don't think that I've thought about training tools, like the type of tools that you're building. Uh, I haven't really perceived those type of tools as important to me as the way that you are approaching it. And I've gained a whole new respect in this. We think of tools like a knife, a fork, your car, a shovel, right? Yep. Those things help us achieve digging a hole or getting from point A to point B. And we forget that this thing is also the best, most well-designed tool that we were given from birth. Yeah, and the, what I would say is that the exercise tools, if they impart a, a new neurological capacity, so you're programming yourself so that the tool usage imparts a physical skill that the feedback from that tool you wouldn't have without it. So beyond just the fact that it's resistance, for example, where you're getting a physiological transformation, that's part of it. But there's another part of it that's the, the neurology and the capacity for you to now orchestrate a movement that without the feedback of the tool, you wouldn't have. Would you say that this is a tool for communicating with your body differently? Yes, exactly. Interesting. Yeah. Right, right. That's and the way like, I think it's connecting with my yeah, mind. Yeah, I mean, think, you know, like a rope, mm -hmm. a simple rope. When you learn the things to do with it besides jumping, you suddenly understand how to pattern these figure eights, how to integrate both hands at the same time, how to, how to feed the non-dominant side with, with information and capacity of the dominant side. And just the brain integration that comes from that. So it puts you in a good state and you are left with a muscle memory that you never forget. It's like riding a bike. So now suddenly the next task that you go to do, it, it, you have a greater facility for onboarding new skills because of the investment in terms of how you've trained yourself with this physical education. And, you know, I like, you know, tick off multiple boxes, right? Get your fitness, get your aesthetic, but also get the skill that you're better at moving yourself. You're better at, at manipulating objects. You're better at locomoting. You're better at posture. You're better at simple things that have profound carryover to all the other things in life. Yeah. Powerful. Powerful. David Weck, you are the man. Oh, well, thank you so much. You got my vote on what you're doing, my dude. Appreciate it's it. It's so good to talk with you. How can we find you? Um, Weckmethod.com is where my inventions reside. Um, cool. The David Weck on Instagram. Cool. And we follow you there. If anybody wants to get in touch with David, you can hit us up on DM and we'll forward him to you. Perfect. Thank you for your time, my dude. It is so good to see you again. And I can't wait to get down to the lab and meet your team and that see the place. Great. Sounds great. Cool. Thank you. Cheers, man. Thanks All for coming right. out, brother. You, you. We're going to get all freaky here. <laughs> We're going to get all freaky here. We're gonna get all freaky here Join us on the deck Here in Freaky Town, USA Just south of Downtown Oceanside CA Stick around for a little while And meet the locals Yeah They're a good old crew That's been around a while Yeah 